All right, welcome back, everybody. We're going to continue messing with uh, type, and we're going to now make some, well, not logos, but we're going to make some uh, little designs here, I guess. Um, let's start with an easy one. I think it's an easy one. We'll see. Okay, so I'm going to type the word tall. I am going to make it larger. And um, I want to... I have a little design. So even like these little uh, little word thing, I, even for these little things I'm doing, you're going to see they're really not a big deal. But I drew little thumbnails for this. And I'm saying that because I can't stress enough how important drawing thumbnails are. And by on a piece of paper, just sketched it out just so I have an idea of what I'm going to do before I get to the computer, even though it only took me a few minutes. And they're not super complicated but it gives me some confidence in what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm gonna pick my tall font, a font that I think of as very tall, uh, Futura. Once again, if you do not have Futura, do not stress it, just get any other kind of sans serif uh, font that you have, a font without serifs, so it kind of matches, and um, you can do the same thing with that as well, okay? You'll obviously run into little different issues and other little nuances, but that's okay. Um, we can deal with it. Okay, so first thing I want to do is just kind of, even though it's going to be messed with, I'm going to kern it a little bit. I'm just going to kind of look and see, and nothing looks too obvious. This feels a little closer, I guess. That's the only thing that feels different than this over here. That feels a little further. So I'm going to tighten it up a little bit more. Not too much. Because there is that space there. And this might totally change. I expect it to totally change once I mess with it. Now I want to make the T and the L, I want to make them look taller, okay? So I am going to be changing the shape of the font, right? And this would be only something I do, like, maybe for a logo or something like that, right? Or a heading or some, maybe a title in a magazine of an article or something like that. So let's go ahead and go type. Let's create some outlines. Okay, here we go. Um, let me... Okay, I'm going to get the white arrow, and I want to grab these anchor points here drag them up and I didn't want it to stretch um, I wanted this part to stretch the stem right I didn't want the uh, little bar up here to stretch so that's why I grabbed all of those okay let's let's see what it looks like I'll just go in increments here and I'm gonna hit command R to bring out the ruler command R and I'm gonna bring a guide down snap it right there just so well it snapped automatically just so I can see when this is lined up with it so once again I'm gonna grab those points I'm gonna start picking them up and obviously I can kind of move them wherever but I want to hold down shift so it keeps them in line at least until I hit a larger increment and bring it up right there okay yeah that's kind of the effect I wanted uh, I could maybe go a little taller. Let's see, now that i got them lined up here. That's pretty close to my design that I drew. But now I can see my kerning is all messed up, right? Because, I, you know, the distance from this part of the T here is now further from the A. So now, now it looks further when before it looked closer. So now I can bring it pretty much in line with how close these are. And the kerning will look better. Okay, there is my tall design for tall. And I'm gonna go ahead and clear my guide. Actually, I'll just leave it there, why not? All right, let's keep going here. Uh, let's try some more, We're gonna, I'm gonna try to increase my complexity as I go here, we'll see if I'm correct. I'm gonna try long. Okay, so for this I had I have the L kind of my sketch here going underneath all my letters. So I'm just going to go ahead and kind of type right there, hit my uh, text. And this time, I'll, because of the way I have this set up, I'm going to want the L separate from the rest of the letters. So I'm going to go ahead and type the L, and then I'm going to type the O-N-G, because I want that L to go underneath it go kind of long 
long ways across the word. So here we go. I'm going to make it larger now just so you can work with it a little easier. And I'm in Futura still. That will work for me, but just for fun, I'm going to switch it. Mm, am I? I did kind of like the shape of those letters. You know, I'll just keep it. Let's see if another... Nah, kind of liking where it is. Okay, so now I want the L to kind of make this line that goes all the way underneath and then continues on the other side here of the word. So, let's see. I'm gonna keep those letters. So let me look at if I have to if I have to current anything. So I'm gonna ignore the L for now because it's kinda gonna be its own separate little thing. I'm just gonna look at the O and G. And they don't look too bad. Maybe the G looks a little far for me. I'm not sure why. I'm just going to trust my instincts here. Maybe now I'll bring the O in. They were probably pretty even. But there we go. Okay. And now this L is kind of going to be somewhere like this. And because I... Now I'm always looking for alignment. Okay. So if I see this little line for the G here, I'm going to go ahead and place... I'm going to go ahead and place a... Uh, guide right there and I, I didn't quite hit it so I'm gonna move this till it's right on that line okay now I can have I have a place to line this L up with and again anytime you have an opportunity for alignment you either want to use it or make sure you're not gonna, like you're not even close to using it okay so I'm, now I'm looking at the spacing I'm just gonna kind of tweak it a little all right, so I'm going to go ahead and create some outlines. Type, create outlines. Now I can mess with these. And I don't want to bring this L across. So I still, I'm not 100% sure how I want to do this. If I wanted to attach it, I wasn't sure if I wanted to attach it or have it continue across outside the letter, but I might like it attached here. Let's see, because I'm looking. Again now, I'm going to hide my guide by hitting command uh, colon. So it's still there, it's just hidden. And I can see it's not perfectly lined up. So I'm going to take this and kind of mess with it there. And just get all the way in there. Almost perfectly in place. So close. Again, okay, zooming way in. So, you just have more control. You know, the closer in you are. That's really close. I'm going to leave it like that for now. Let's see. Okay, so let me see. Now this feels a little far. Okay. It's working for me. I'm just kind of wondering if I want to make these longer as well. Or if that kind of just messes up the way everything looks. Maybe I want to line it up with the other letters. No, then it looks too small. Let's raise it up a little. Okay. You know, I think I do like it attached. I at first was thinking I was going to cut it there and bring it out further, but I kind of like the way it lines up like that. I think that looks nice. Now, if I needed to and I wanted to add a stroke or something, I could join these shapes together by selecting them both. Um, let me see. I did it with a white arrow, but let's see what happens if I do it with a black arrow. Yeah, so it selected them all when I hit the G. So with a white arrow, I can grab that G by clicking in the middle of it, hold Shift, grab that L. I can join them together. Let's see if maybe I want to make it a different color or something. Probably not, but now they would react together. All right, there is long. 
Okay. Let's go to another space here. Let me zoom out. Find out where I am. There I am. Command R for now. Get rid of that ruler for now. And let's go ahead and type our next letter. Letters. So go into the type tool. And let's hit let's type slice. And I think I want this to be capital. Okay, and for slice, again, I'm going to select it, hold down shift, drag that corner. And I am in Futura, but I, I want a bold. I want a bold version of it. Let's see, I'm going I'm to switch to another font here. I'm going to try Helvetica regular. Where's bold? Hmm. Let's see. Looking for something a little thicker. Not Cooper Black thick, but me. No, no, I don't want. I was thinking. I know I have an ultra bold version of Gil Sands, but that's avant-garde bold. Sure, let's do avant-garde bold. That's fine. Okay, so for slice, I want to add a slice in my letters. Okay, so let's take these. Uh, let's go ahead and kern them first. So not too bad. So the, the, the C is so round and wide, it does feel like it kind of pushes the other letters away a bit, I'm, which is strangely making this L and I look a little close to me somehow even though it's got all that space there. And that S definitely feels far. You know what, but I kind of want it tighter, I guess. I, I'm gonna go for a tighter kerning now that I think about it because um, I do want the slice to be a little closer together. So I'm gonna bring everything in just a smidge then instead. Which I'll probably end up just putting it back to normal, <laughs> back to where it was. We'll see, okay, maybe a little more. Okay, I'm squinting my eyes at it, kind of sitting back and looking, silently judging my work, and okay. Again, I <laughs> I wish this was a I had a quick process for kerning and for getting it to look right, but it really is just takes time and takes looking at it and doing it, looking at it again, and doing that sort of thing. Okay, here is slice. Let's go ahead and select it. Let's go ahead and hit type. I always go to object since I'm so used to going to expand appearance, but type and let's go to create outlines. There we go. Okay, so I wanna add like a cut across there somewhere. Okay, let's go to the knife tool and see if I can do this here. Let me select it again. There we go. Knife and let's cut it. Try that again. I want it to go a little more across. Oh, maybe you know, maybe I don't need to hit the last two at the end letters. I'll just hit these right here. Okay, let's see what happened here. Oh, I forgot to grab this bottom here and this bottom there. There we go. So using the white arrow. So now that I cut it, I'm using the white arrow. I'm going to select the E. This part of the C here on the right, this lower part of the I, and the lower part of the L. Now I'm going to kind of shift them a bit and bring a little break. And I can just kind of play with it and see what it looks like. Maybe I want to shift it the other way. And again, I'm just kind of looking, seeing what I like. Maybe a little subtle shift is going to be a little, a little better. So keep it kind of subtle here. Let's see. Okay, maybe I want to pull it away just a little. Let's see here. And we have 
sliced our letters. All right, cool. And let's go ahead and do another one here. Okay, this one is going to be a little different here. So I'm going to do go over here and type the word whole, all caps. Dun dun dun. Um, let's see. And what I want to do, I'm going to make it bigger once again, holding Shift, is I want to make the O negative space, right? So this will be white and then have the whole black, but I want it to overlap the H and the L a bit as well. Okay. So it'll take a little rearranging with uh, our uh, our group once we get it in there. So let's go ahead and kern this. So it's going to have to be kerned pretty. Now it's going to be messed with. So the O and the H and the L, that's all going to be kind of changed because I need it to overlap. I don't necessarily care about having that in place right now um, because I'm going to have to mess with it more once I... Um, I'm working with it here, but I know it's going to need to be tight. So I'm just going to go ahead and tighten up the L and the E. And it's almost inconsequential right now to do this. So I'm just going to go ahead and switch to my um, outlines here. Okay, so now I've got my outlines. And now what I need to do here is this is going to be white, the, uh, the O. So I'm just going to go ahead and separate this O here. I'm just going to take it out of this little group. Okay, so let's go ahead and make it white, and it's on top, and let's go ahead and move it over, and then I'm going to go ahead and move this over, holding shift so it stays in place, or in line, I guess is the right thing to say. Okay, cool. Now I need this circle in the O to be black, okay? So easiest way to do it, easiest way, I think, would be to just make another circle and just fit it on top there. So I'm going to hold down Shift, make a circle, and color it in black. And I want to put it on top. But I want to make it the same size, so need to look at that one. So I need to see them both. Okay, so here we go. So I'm going to take my white O, switch it to red for now, just so I can see what's going on. And you know, I made that pretty close. Let's go ahead and black arrow this thing. So I kind of see what's going on here. Actually, this one I think I want to make transparent right now. So I can see how things are lining up. I made that way closer than I ever thought I would on my first attempt. And you might find that your um, the hole in the O actually, you know, the actual O isn't actually a perfect circle, which is interesting. So I can let go of shift and kind of mess with it if I want to. But I think for this, because it's going to be the only thing we see, I think I actually would rather keep it a uh, perfect circle, even if the original one was not a perfect circle. Okay, so there it is. Let's go ahead and switch that back. Whoops, let go of it, I guess. There we go. Switch that back to black. Now I want to go back to my circle, my O, sorry, and turn that to white again. And there we go. All right, I've got a little negative space, little uh, design going with the hole. And Again, if you wanted to take this further and actually cut this out of the H, because you might need to if you're doing this as a logo, let's go ahead and do that real quickly and kind of show how we would do that. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. So here's what I actually do, and I'm just kind of falling back on what I normally do. Once I'm going to mess with something enough that I wouldn't be able to get back after I'd save it, I, I like to duplicate it or save it as a different file or another document just so I can always get back to my original design. Um, so I would actually have two, right? One that I would present to everybody like this, if this was like for something, and then one that I would um, 
keep that I need if I needed to work or change something larger. Okay, so there's my circle. I want to subtract this O from these letters back there. So let's go ahead and take this O. I'm going to just take all these letters out here. No reason to even have them in there. Okay, let's take this. Let's take these shapes there. Now they're because I took them out, now they're all, I know they're all independent. Let's go ahead and minus the front. Okay, um, so now I've got them all separate, so I can adjust them separately. And I'm going to need to subtract the H, or the O from the H, and then the O from the L. So I'm going to kind of need two O's, basically. So I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to put it right back on top. And that's a quick way to duplicate. Um, Let's see another way I could duplicate. I could right click on my shape and no, oh, where is it? Let me do it a different way. And go here to duplicate. Duplicate it right there. And now I've got two of them. That's a better way actually, because then you won't have a chance of messing it up. So here it is. I'm gonna I'm gonna turn one off, maybe lock it so I don't accidentally grab it or whatever. Here's the one O. I'm gonna select it, select my H minus the front okay now cool now again i've got the problem with the l here so i'm going to get my turn i'm going to unlock my o that i duplicated select that now grab it with the l and then minus the front again all right very cool so now i've got this all set up and it's set up um, in the correct way there's my original right there all right, very cool. Okay, we've got one more that I want to do, one more. And this one, I want to interlock two letters, at least make it look interlocked. So I'm going to select it, but I want a different font. I want something a little skinnier. So let me see, avant, that's avant-garde bold. Avant-garde thin, if I have that, I think I do. Should be pretty good. Bleak. No, no, I don't think I have a thin. I just have regular, oh, regular is pretty good. Okay, so I want the O and the C to look like they're kind of overlapping each other, kind of locked in on each other. Huh, looks like there's a little divot in there. That's very strange. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll deal with it. We'll see what happens. It's very strange. So first thing I want to do is kind of kern this. And I'm going to kern it. I'm actually going to kern this one into place. So I'm going to go ahead and go all the way. I want it to overlap. And I want there to be a gap in the middle so I can tell that it's kind of locked or interlocked. Okay, and because that's kerned so beyond tightly, it's just, uh, you know, it's overlapping. I'm going to actually adjust these so they look a lot tighter as well, just so it kind of matches the style. Okay, cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and create some outlines here. Type. Create outlines. There it is. And I got to do a couple things. One is uh, I'm gonna I want one of these to look like they're going on top. Let's say I want the C to look like it's going on top of the O, and then behind the O on this part, so it looks like it's kind of like you know tethered through it or something. So I'm gonna create that illusion um, by having two uh, two letters here, and you'll see what I mean. But I have to change the color. If I, if I don't change the color of a letter we won't be able to tell if it's overlapping or, or not or whatever's going on. So definitely want to change the color of the letter. So let's do that. And now I want this O, let's say, let's, um, well, it doesn't really matter. Let's say, okay, I want the O to go on top here, okay? So now in order to do that, I'm going to do something very easy, all right? Um, you could just erase this part of the C, but that gets kind of weird and that gets kind of hard. So what I actually want to do is I want to duplicate this O. So let me go in here and find that O. Where are you, O? Oh, there's lock on my, those letters look weird. Okay, there we go. That looks like what I want. 
So I'm going to duplicate this O. So here we go. Um, nope. Let's go here. Yeah. And duplicate compound path. Perfect. Okay. Now I've got the O here. Now you got to look closely here. Now what I need to do is put this C in between my two O's. So I actually have two O's. So I'm going to actually do this. I'm going to turn one O a different color so you can see what's going on. So there's my one O and I'll change it back later. So that's going to be a green O. There's my C between them and there's the black O on top. Okay. So for the black O, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to select it and I'm going to erase part of it. So a lot of it actually. Where's my eraser tool? you come from there we go okay there you are eraser tool eraser tool right there and while I've got it selected let's make it uh, bigger yeah there we go and so let's say I want this to go you know what I want it to go on top so I do want I actually want the C to go on top here so that means I'm gonna erase this part of the O and now it looks like the C is going on top, right? Now I know it's green, so you can't really tell, but when I change that O to black, now it'll look like they're interlocking. And that's really it, pretty simple. I've just got one O that's complete, then I got the C on top of it, and I have the incomplete O on top, right? It's, it's actually on top, but it, because I erased part of it, it looks like it's going behind there. And that part's on top. Pretty easy. I'm still not sure what's going on with that little, this little weirdness down here with the, uh, the C here. It was there before I even turned it to outlines. If I didn't, I'd think I messed up somewhere. So now, if this was a logo, I actually would probably try and fix this so it looked uh, more normal. Very strange. All right problem for another day. All right, but there is my interlocking letters. And there we go. We got some little uh, little designs there. Hopefully you learned about how we can start applying uh, some tricks or some uh, uses of the outlines um, with the uh, type. And you can make some cool designs and some, uh, you know, some cool looking logos. All right. Well, I will see you guys in the next video. Hope you guys learned something. Catch you next time.